In this video, we're going to more completely address the topic of packages and import statements. Now, we've been using import statements uh, for quite a while now, mainly because we have been needing to import the functions for reading input. So, we have frequently typed in import io.stdin.underscore so that we could use things like readint and readline and readdouble uh, without getting a deprecation warning from them. And we've talked briefly about what this means. We've said, for example, that readint really has a longer name. It's technically scala.io.readint. And if we don't do the import, we could use this full name and not get any warnings. Of course, no one wants to type in that full name. We also saw when we looked in the API that things are broken into packages. And there's a reason for this. It's because there are certain names that get used a lot. And if you don't have packages, if everything is kind of together in what you might refer to as the same namespace, then they, things with the same name would collide. A perfect example of this is the name list. So we've been using lists in Scala, and when I type in something like that, it says that we have a list. Now technically the list that we get here is a scala.collection.immutable list. Okay. Once again, a really long name. Fortunately, because lists are used so, so often, Scala brings this in for us and we don't have to, to import it or use the long name. There are other things with the name list though. In particular, Java has things by the name of list. There is a java.util.list and there is a, also a java.awt.list. Those two things are very different from each other. The util list has, bears some resemblance to our Scala list but it's still something that's very different. They're all called, called lists though. And so if we didn't have packages, we couldn't distinguish them. Okay? They'd, they'd conflict with one another and you'd have to keep coming up with completely new names all the time. And that's problematic, especially when you have different people writing the code. You don't even know what names other people are using, so it's, it's kind of impossible. But if you put your things in packages that are named in a fairly unique way, you don't have this problem. Now, we're starting to look at files, and using files, turns out there's one more type that we are going to want to use imports for, and that is the type scala.io.source. Because Scala is imported by default, we can actually call this just io.source, and that's not all that long. You'll note that this io here in the scala.io is the same one that's at the beginning of our read in. IO stands for input output, and so it makes sense that the stuff that's reading from a file is in the same package that we use for doing our standard imports. So, what about this underscore here? Well, what that means is that I want to import everything. So, if I do a, an import of scala.io.underscore, then all of the things inside of scala.io will become visible. And so they will all be brought into the current scope and we'll be able to use them directly. <clears throat> if I only wanted a few things, so for example, if we were using stuff from java.util, I really don't want to import java.util.underscore because that will bring in Java's list and that will then hide Scala's list and it'll make it really hard for us to do things with lists. We'll have to use this long name. So we can use an alternate syntax if I want to import multiple things. Now of course I could have multiple imports, one for each line for each different thing that I wanted to import, but I can also put things inside of curly braces. And so let's say that I wanted to have the type random and I'm blanking on what else is even in util that I might use uh, array list. 
<clears throat> we probably wouldn't use that. The Scala collections are better for us. But anyway, so I could do that. And now I've imported these two types, but I haven't brought in everything. So I haven't hidden my basic list. I've mentioned several times that Scala is imported by default. Turns out there are three things that are imported by default. You do not have to import Scala.underscore because it's brought in for you. It turns out that Java.lang.underscore, which has the basic Java libraries, is also imported by default. And there is also a Scala.predef dot underscore that's imported. And so this brings in all of the contents of predef, which stands for predefined. So it seems kind of uh, intuitive that that is where they would put the things that they want to bring in automatically. Another thing to know about imports is that they can have a scope. So if I have curly braces and I do an import inside of these curly braces, so let's go ahead and do import scala.io.source. When I close those curly braces, that import's no longer in effect. So even though I have this import statement here, it's not imported down here because I closed this off. So you can do imports in a reduced scope. We're actually not going to do that for the most part. Generally, we're going to put all of our imports at the top of the file, in which case they will have scope throughout the entire file. But you can reduce the scope of things if you're importing something that you only need in a small portion of the file, and perhaps if its name might conflict with something else that you want to use, a reduced scope for an import uh, can be useful in those situations.